We're about to go audio live, and we'll be starting in five minutes. I will be performing to just a handful of everyone. The storm has made a little laid back sound, but we're going to be okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the world's greatest comedy festival this weekend. Slash, slash, take over your own comedy. Yeah! Stuff that we don't want to do. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. My name's Sean McCarthy. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. We have a wonderful lineup of uh, stand-up comedians tonight. It's our all-hot Latinas night. Everybody on the show tonight is a spicy Latina female. Uh, we have a little bit of an echo, it sounds like, maybe. Is that me? Okay. Uh, my voice is so nice, you'll hear it twice. <laughs> it's called an echo. Let me just hit my medical meth vape pen. My battery might be broken, ladies and gentlemen. Let me hit this one. From our sponsors, Sunny Slope, Stevie Ray Vapes. Uh, good evening. Um, we're live right now on uh, MySpace Live and YouTube Live. You can catch us and subscribe and hit that pound button and like it at Tickle Your Bone Comedy on YouTube or www.tickleyourbonecomedy.com. Welcome from all the people around the world. I know Ukraine is watching tonight. 
I know Ukraine is watching tonight. <laughs> we have four of the greatest comedians that you could find in a Home Depot parking lot with a sign that says Trabajo. So there's that. I'm very excited tonight. I have a brand new haircut I gave to myself with my dog clippers, which I'm very proud of. Uh, I got a brand new shirt on, new pants, and new sneakers. I want to do our whole new outfit tonight and do some new material, kick off the show with a brand new joke. Demi Moore uh, had her uh, third child 25 <laughs> years ago. She has a kid named Scout uh, Willis, Rumor Willis, and her third child. What you talking about, Willis? Come on, folks. I'm <coughs> All new stuff in my new outfit. <laughs> I'm so stupid. <coughs> oh my gosh, those uh, those vape pens are intense. I did write some notes. I don't want to. Oh, I, oh, I want to mention that those. I remembered some funny. I'm, some Legos. I uh. No, I don't think so. Echo, echo, echo. No, I think we're good. Um. So uh, we we only uh, we have uh, we have uh, some of our favorites on the show tonight. Uh, Darrell Johnson's on the show tonight. John Henry, the originator, the man who started this show. The man who painted that lady on the wall, which turns out to be a hairless Asian boy that goes by the name of Marie Kwan that he met while he was in Taiwan a couple years ago. He made an homage to the wonderful, wonderful, beautiful transvestites who have that bonus part called a penis. Uh, so John Henry's on the show. It's Sierra Renee Miranda. She's on the show tonight. If she can, I don't know if she's here or not yet. She's probably late. She's in the storm out there fighting that Phoenix storm. And uh, lastly, Joe Gangemi will also be on the show tonight, which is very exciting. <laughs> right now, there's some people uh, uh, at home right now, and they're like, right now it's storming outside in Phoenix. Uh, and they're, uh, they're worried because, you know, when it storms in Phoenix, it gets it was a little windy, a little windy driving here. And uh, sometimes in Arizona, it's hot. So there you go. I told you all the weather you'll get every year. Let me have a sip of this wonderful, refreshing, bubbly water. <coughs> oh, uh, here's uh, something I'd like to say that uh, uh, um, a couple things um, I'll chat about before we bring up some of these all stars tonight. And uh, oh, before I go any further, Sierra's not here, right? She's on the way, right? She's not here. Okay, okay. <coughs> We're fine. I don't even have an order yet, so we'll figure that out as we go. Uh, there's only four comics. I might even just let the audience uh, decide. So, all you people that are sitting up front, <laughs> get your pens and papers. You're going to want to keep score. Let us know who you want to book, who you who you want to put on. And once again, Sunny Slope, Stevie Ray Vapes for the finest. <laughs> this is medical meth and fentanyl, but they both have pine sulfur terps and CBDs. If you hit them both, it's like the Chris Barley. Anybody want to hit it? <laughs> or the John Belushi, if you remember who John Belushi was. <laughs> God, that's just, this medical marijuana is strong, huh? <laughs> Holy shit. I remember getting an ounce back in 1994 and I moved here. It was 25 bucks. It was stems and seeds a million. You'd smoke about four joints. You're like, I think I'm high. I think I'm high. Now we got that stuff that makes me uh, forget where we are on the show. Well, thank you all for coming out. It's been a wonderful night, I think. John Henry was my favorite. Uh, <coughs> he's no longer my favorite. He was. No, John Henry is. Um, oh, here's uh, here's uh, something I, I remember. To I, I laughed. Uh, I, I chuckled about. Um, I uh, I uh, I had dated. Uh, I, I dated. Um, I dated a couple women that were older than me. But one one in particular was was 12 years older than me when I was uh, 35. And uh, no, I was 33. So she was 12, she was 45. And um, and uh, <coughs> she was so sweet. But <laughs> my point is, is Mrs. Robinson. 
She was gorgeous. And I was all, when, even when I was younger, I did, like, when I was younger, younger my wife now is my, my same exact age. Maybe, like, I'm six months older than her. And it's the first time I ever dated and, 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 you know, been in love and so for, like, 15 years with, with someone that's my own age, which is wonderful. But up until her, they were always older than me. And this one in particular, she was, like, 45. She was 12 years older than me, which right now means she's 67, you old nasty <laughs> bitch, if you're watching home. I'm just kidding. I think of that sometimes, like, oh, my God, I hope she's taking Boniva. I'm going in deep. Fucking wheelchair, come on, honey. <coughs> but um, she was she was gorgeous. She was absolutely beautiful. But she would always lie about her age. Like she was very insecure. Like she always wanted everyone to think she was younger. And I'm like, just be. Fu- you're fucking gorgeous for 45. You're fucking amazing. And she was just gorgeous. But she would try and tell people. Like and one time I caught her. She she tried to tell someone she was 34. And I go, don't fucking do that. And she's like, why? I don't I don't want to be 45. I go, yeah, but let me tell you something. For 45, you are so fucking hot. Like, oh, my God, how are you this old? And th- you look like a – you look so good. You know what I mean? But if you're trying to tell people, like, you're 34, 33, and you're like, yeah, this bitch smoked too many cigarettes. What the fuck? Maybe <laughs> should have laid off the nose candy, honey. <laughs> like, you can tell how old someone is, and they look good. But if you try and lie, it's like, bitch, come on. How are you feeling? <laughs> I told her, I said, listen, if you want people to be impressed, tell people that you're, like, 68. You're only 45. Say, oh, I'm 68. People will be like, God damn, you are fucking hot. And then people want to fuck you more. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sierra just walked in. <laughs> welcome to the show, folks. My name's Sean. Uh, welcome to Tickle Your Bone Comedy. I'd like to thank our sponsors uh, from Sunny Slope Stevie Ray Vapes. Uh, I don't know if <laughs> medical meth and medical fentanyl. Sierra just walked in. I have to reset everything. So that was that woman uh, that I dated, and there's uh, that story about that. Sierra, I did uh, I did mention that I'm wearing um, new pants, new shoes, and a new shirt, and I got a new haircut, and I start off the show with a brand new joke you probably never heard before. It goes like this. Demi Moore had her third child 25 years ago. Works every goddamn time. What you talking about, Willis? Come on now. Oh, it's hot in here. What's up? Oh, woo, woo, this is what a real comic looks like, okay, Uh, (laughs) it's back, it's been 15 years, 15 years since I broke out a snappy shirt to that bit, all right, I love uh, that Sierra's here in that hat looking like she's about to go on a life aquatic, Dude, get her a Speedo and a hat. Welcome to the Life Aquatic. Remember that? They all had orange hats. <laughs> um, my favorite thing in the world is the, I, the reason I, I was, I was out by, I went to buy pants for work, but I like these so much. They're very comfortable. They're like very stretchy, like almost, almost like sweatpants, but they're pants and they're fashionable. And the shirt matches and it's a snappy shirt, which is my fucking favorite. Because no matter what, this is the best. Like if any shit goes down, you got one of these shirts on, you're like, bro, what the fuck? You got a problem? <laughs> You want to fucking go, bro? You want to fucking go? Boom, like no one. And if your friend has a fan and it blows, you're like. Dude, these are great. When I was a kid, I had a snappy shirt, and I want to show this is me on Halloween. Trick or treat, what's up? Suck it. It's 12. It worked every time. Oh, this is a true story. I went. I met this one time. I went on a first date, and I showed up. I knocked on the door. It opened up, and I just went like this. Suck it. It ain't going to suck itself. Let's go. Welcome to Blind Dates. So stupid. So stupid. So stupid. All right, we're not going to do that no more. That's stupid. That's a gag. We just put that away. But it's fun. Get yourself a snappy shirt, especially you broads with the hot tits. <laughs> Boom, two Jews walked into a bar. Nice tits. I'm kidding. Sierra, what's going on? Is that hot wings? I can smell them. They smell fucking great. You know what it is? It's the stinging sweetness and spiciness of the vinegar that makes my shirt go. Are those wings hot? <laughs> those wings hot? <laughs> <laughs> Let me do some laundry. <laughs> so I hate myself for loving me. The shit that I do, I want to bang you three. What's up? <laughs> All night long. Fuck you, Matt Rife. I'll make you take my rhythm, bitch. 
This is what 55 and no steroids look like. DMT and mushrooms. <laughs> Last week, a female comedian uh, had mentioned this, and I say this because a lot of comics will say this, that they do this because they can't afford therapy. <laughs> They're like, you know, they always, it's a joke. It goes around forever. Like, oh, I'm just doing this because I can't afford a therapy. I've heard men and women say that. So I'm like, if you're saying that, you just should get therapy. We don't need to hear your shit. <laughs> get help and then come tell us. You know what I'm saying? Like, know who you are and then tell us. Because like therapy and prescription drugs, there's side effects in stand-up comedy that people don't talk about. Like, people just come in going, this is going to be great. This is going to be awesome. It's my therapy. It's free. I, I'm going to meet friends. I'm going to do open mics. I'm going to do new faces. I'm going to do a comedy. Be, Dude, there's fucking side effects to this shit. Things can go sideways. <laughs> and no one talks about them. And I have to mention that they we're at the end of my set, and just like the end of every prescription drug commercial, I just want to let you folks know that comedy is not as fun as you think, and if you don't do it right, there's side effects. So be careful. <laughs> I don't want things to happen to you like headaches, uncomfortableness, irritation, rash, swelling, nausea, random sexual encounters, permanent memory loss, depression, incontinence, seizure, trouble swallowing, blindness, deafness, paralysis, dialysis, weird piss, gonorrhea, diarrhea, pyrrhea. Rhea Perlman, gout, self-doubt, what it all about, anticipation, constipation, emancipation, proclamation, heart attack, heartache, heartbreak, batteries not included. If high fever, stiff muscles, and confusion occur, please see a doctor to address life-threatening illness and or death. Elderly audience members with dementia will die at some point, and if you're allergic to stand-up comedy, please do not take stand-up comedy. So we're just going to say that at the end of my set, and I hope nobody gets hurt tonight. I hope we have a safe show. Don't fuck around. Wear a condom. Make sure when you're on stage you're wearing a condom or using a dental dam. I don't want to look at anybody in specific, but you know who you are. <laughs> Talking about going down a life aquatic. Hello. <laughs> I'm so stupid. I'm fucking out of my mind. I was hitting my uh, DMT vape. I want one of those fucking wings so goddamn bad, but I know I'll get it on my new shirt. They smell so good. All right. All right. What's up? It, it's fucking amazing. I think Waylon wants it. My dog Waylon's here tonight. He's over in the corner. I got him from the Almost Their Rescue in Phoenix. They take a pregnant dog that they'll get like from off the streets, and they, they keep it in their shelter, which is all beautiful and clean. They have these amazing – they had a fundraiser this weekend called Puppies and Pilates where you could go do Pilates and yoga, and they just had like 40 puppies running around with everybody. It's fucking amazing. Yeah. And all the puppies, they do DNA, so you know what the puppies you're getting is. My dog is a Chewini Whalen. He's a Chihuahua Dachshund. And there's a, they tell you the whole backstory. Apparently, uh, his mom was a, a, a female from um, a female Chihuahua from Sinaloa, and she was partying in Rocky Point. <laughs> she got knocked up by some jock, Scottsdale Dachshund, and he bailed and left her there. So she made it to Nogales, and I'm raising one of the four anchor babies that she gave birth to, named <laughs> Whalen. <laughs> He was part of the, the cutest thing is that he was part of the motorcycle litter because he was originally Ducati. He's got a sister, Harley, Suzuki, and Yamaha. So they, you know, that's how they name him. Like there was like one litter and it was like all boys. and It was like Ricky, Ronnie, Bobby, and Mike. And I was like, uh-oh. <laughs> New addition. They give him the cutest names. It was like, the, like they'll have like the Ohio puppies. And it's like, it's like uh, Canton, Cleveland, Cincinnati. You know, it's like, so it's like little themes. It's fucking absolutely adorable. What, what's that? No, there's a, no, not new edition. That was a, no, yeah. No, not Menudo. Yeah, yeah, th yeah. The brothers, Bobby Brown, Ricky, Ronnie, Bobby, and Mike. Yeah, yeah. No, Menudo was Ricky Martin, and all those boys were molested really bad. Apparently, yeah. Just, that was horrible. I'm in a Latin group. You're 13. Get out. Give me some new ass. So I gotta fuck this. It's horrible how the music industry was. People are like, why is Leif Garrett such a junkie? <laughs> that boy has seen more dick. Anyway unwanted dick so anyway that's uh that's the story of my uh little wonderful whalen and uh and the uh and the uh and the clinic there and you should uh he's just wonderful he's in back just uh relaxing i love him so much but now the weirdest thing is he's walking with this little hitch in his get along so i gotta take he's only like eight months i gotta take him to the vet and just make sure i don't know what he did he jumped and maybe sprained his hip <laughs> i know a little shit a little spaz he's a little spaz all right enough about him all right, so we've got four comics. Uh, does anyone want to choose who we want to go first? Anyone want to request anyone, ladies? 
I could have Sierra go four times. We can get this done real quick. We'll just have her do like one set and get the fuck out. All right, well, we could go with Joe Durrell and or John Henry. You want a guinea, a brother, or some white guy from the Midwest? Joe? Go, Joe. Oh, that's a good starter. I'm going to just break out a few more bits real quick. I want to talk about my brother Clancy and Herschel real quick, if I could. Herschel was my best friend from when I was uh, 10 years old. I played Little League. He was six foot three and smoked cool cigarettes. <laughs> I fucking loved Herschel. I w oh, and, uh, here, I'll just say one joke. I'll tell you this. funny thing about Herschel was he was really, he was, a, he was like my best friend. He was so funny because he was like this uh, skinny little white kid. I know, skinny little white kid, you know, half Jew, half Irish kid with my best friend. He was like, Six foot tall black guy with an afro that looked like Dr. J. We were just like the goofiest. We should have had our own sitcom. We were fucking great. But I played Little League with him, and he was the funniest because he would get up to bat. Like the first time he'd get up, fucking the whole team, like would the whole out, everybody would run to the outfield thinking he was going to hit it. And, and like I would just laugh because like they have no idea he's going to pop out to like shortstop. No matter how kid, this kid was huge. No matter how he leaned into it, he always popped out to the shortstop. It was funny for seeing a man that looked like Bo Jackson that couldn't hit a ball out of the infield was the funniest <laughs> thing I've ever seen. So people are like, black people are better athletes. I'm like, do you know my friend Herschel? He couldn't hit it out of the infield. <laughs> and here's a funny story. You know on South Park how they say, Token, every black guy has a base under their fucking couch. And Token's like, yeah, it's being raised. And then Token had a base. And I'll never forget. I remember Herschel goes, hey, you want to see my dad's base and my uncle's guitar? And he had a bass and a guitar. That was like two of them. It was fucking great. <laughs> and they were both lime green. So when I saw that South Park episode, I was like, huh. All brothers have a base in their house. I wonder if that's true. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Sierra needs mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. <laughs> All right. Let's stop fucking around. Let's get on with this show. I'm very excited in my new outfit. And, uh, and the uh, talent we have tonight are some of the hottest spicy Latinas in the business. <laughs> we have four spicy Latinas on the show tonight. You've seen them all at every club in town, and they all have the same bit. I don't know why we're here. I'm kidding. This dude. <laughs> we're going to kick off the show with a young man uh, who I've known forever, uh, who probably drove maybe the farthest. I don't know. Maybe Darrell and him could fight it out for that competition. Um, I used to think that this guy uh, had like 10 kids and didn't smoke cigarettes. Turns out he smokes cigarettes, sells kids in the uh, <laughs> for cigarettes, and uh, has recently... Recently started an illegal squirrel selling ring on Craigslist. So if you need yourself a hot squirrel that's illegal, you want to look. Okay, I'm just being stupid. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the very funny and talented. And he said he's got some new stuff and some old bombing material. So we're going to just let him do his shit, folks. Give it up for the very funny and talented. Going to do all the shit he's going to do. Mr. Joe Gangemi. Hey, what's up? I'm glad you picked me. I have to piss so bad. I was just waiting for Sean to say, hey, can I get another one of your chances? Thank you. Uh, I have to piss so fucking bad. I was just waiting for him to say who was up first so I could go take a piss. But now here we are. <laughs> Bridges on a Tuesday, out here living the dream. Uh, yeah. It's like I say, uh, dreams are like grandparents. Uh, mine are all dead. Yeah, thanks, Sierra. <laughs> Continue scrolling Instagram and looking like you escaped from a cold women's prison. <laughs> thanks for that. John spent the entire fucking time Sean was on stage watching Netflix. <laughs> he had his stand. He's got the stand out right now. Oh, you're watching the feed. Okay. I mean, live in the moment, dude. You're here. Why well, you gotta watch it on a screen? Live in the moment. Fuck. Ah, uh, getting older, that sucks. Fuck that. Um, hate getting older. Uh, I hate getting older because people don't like old things. Uh, I, I know that because I was driving with my wife the other day, <laughs> and uh, she was like, oh, my God, look in that car. It's a puppy. And then we got closer, and she went, ugh, it's just a dog. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> that dog still has value. That dog still has a purpose. Why you got to fucking say it like that, you know? Is that, is that how you're going to talk about me? <laughs> Speaking of my wife, uh, we got some good news today. Um, we've been uh, trying to have a kid for a while now. 
<laughs> yeah, well, so we we were it was a little touch and go there. Uh, so we went IVF, uh, and so we were doing a chat on a video call with our doctor today, uh, and she's she's not pregnant, um, but it's not my fault, <laughs> which is almost better. Uh, the doctor, as we're on the call, uh, she's like, is it because he smokes? And he's like, no, actually, it doesn't look like that has anything to do with it. He's like, is it excessive drinking? <laughs> he's like, no, it looks like everything's fine with him. And she's like, well, what's what's the problem? He's like, I don't know. It could be, like, stress. Maybe you should just chill the fuck out. And I was just, <laughs> I was just in the background like, it's my fucking dog, dude. I love this guy. If I go back in time, he'd be the best man at my wedding. <laughs> I'd just be like, <laughs> go, bro. No, I, I, I love my wife, though. She's the best. Uh, but she's, like, real into this whole baby thing. Uh, the other day in bed, she called me daddy. Uh, but I grew up without a dad. Um, so I don't know what, like, the love and affection of a father is supposed to be like. Uh, so I just got confused. <laughs> I was just like, do you want me to leave? <laughs> I'll go get cigarettes and never come back, bitch. Don't fucking try me. <laughs> no, I, <was laughs> I would, I don't know if I'd never leave her. Uh, she likes to fall asleep to white noise. So every night before her bed, uh, I put on old episodes of Friends. <laughs> <laughs> She's been having like these really crazy dreams lately. Uh, which means the first 30 to 40 minutes of my day is about uh, hearing shit that didn't happen. <laughs> she just be like, oh, it was at my cousin's house, and there was a dog the size of the room, but it wasn't my cousin's house. It just, that's where he lived. I'm like, none of this fucking happened. Why are you telling me this? I hate when people talk about it. Like, I'm sure even at Martin Luther King's famous uh, I Have a Dream speech, when he started up, uh, I had a dream. There's people in the audience like, oh, fuck, here we go. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you dreamed racism didn't exist? Yeah, that's fucking <laughs> cool. We all wish that, but guess what? It's not real. <laughs> Talking about shit that didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm really tired of? <laughs> Is everyone feeling like they're smart. Everyone feels like they're fucking smart, and I hate it. We're all dumb. Very few of us are even, like, mildly smart, and no one's really. Th like, I had a buddy today. He starts messaging me, did you see the bridge collapse? And I was like, no, where? And he's like, Baltimore. I'm like, I don't live in Baltimore. Why would I have <laughs> seen that? And he's like, oh, dude, you're not plugged in. You don't know what's going on. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, a, con a shipping container hit the bridge and took it out. He's like... Obviously, a foreign power hacked us. <laughs> this is the beginning. <laughs> Dude, get your, get your shit ready. And I was like, what? He's like, Black Swan operation is in progress. <laughs> and I was like, Dude, I've known you since high school. You failed pre-algebra twice. <laughs> You're fucking dumb. Why would I listen to you? about any of these like no here's what's going china I'm like shut the fuck up dude N you know nothing i've known you your whole even the fucking people we think are smart are dumb yeah elon musk uh took one of the most notarized uh brands in the world twitter and was like i know we'll call it x people don't still call it that they still call it twitter like, he fucking didn't, that's dumb. He, he, you know what's not a smart guy move? Dating someone named Grimes. <laughs> if you think you're going to be in a long-term relationship with some broad named Grimes, <laughs> that's not a smart move, dude. Uh, S Stephen Hawking, one of the smartest people of a generation, he went to Epstein's island. He, you're on a sex trafficking island and you're paralyzed? You're going to put that much heat on you just to watch? <laughs> you can watch online. That's a, not a smart guy move.
People are just so afraid to admit it. I can admit it. I'm dumb. What? Midgets do calculus. Yes. Yeah. Yes. They, that's the story. That's the story that people believe because they're dumb. No, he was watching a fucking hot 15-year-old get railed. Not watching midgets do math. But that's funnier, so people believe it. No, but, okay. <laughs> do math, bitch. Ah. <laughs> uh. Just, just type in O. Oh. oh my God. But no, it's fine. People, more people need to just admit we're dumb. We're all dumb. We've, we've all believed dumb things. Like what's, uh, what's the dumbest thing someone in here has ever believed for real for at least a while? Yeah, that's not. Who's that? <laughs> Did Darrell say the Bible? Yeah. Dude. Yeah. You're like okay. This is real. I've been told my whole youth life, this is fucking real. And then you're an adult and you're like, I don't think you could really live in a whale's stomach. <laughs> Maybe that's a parable, you know? But uh, as a kid, you don't think that. Mine, uh, my cousins convinced me uh, that Rhythm was a big Jamaican dude <laughs> who snatched up bad kids. And then they would sing Gloria Stefan's The Rhythm Is Gonna Get You at me as like a threat. They'd be like, the rhythm is gonna get you. The rhythm is gonna tonight. Dun, dun. And I'd be like, stop, why are you doing this? <laughs> and for years, I would just lay in my bed waiting for some big dreadlocked motherfucker to kick open the door and be like, Doo, me here for the boy. He being bad. <laughs> Not a mess. <laughs> I believe that. Till like fourth grade, when my music teacher was like, today we're going to learn about rhythm. And I was like, no. And I had to go to the counselor. Something else people just believe. Uh, recently, a bee was trying to attack me. And I was like, I'm going to fucking kill this bee. And my friend was like, no, you can't hurt a bee. They're endangered. And I was like, dude's trying to fucking kill me. And they're like, are you allergic? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> Probably, because I have so much genetic information inside me that says avoid this thing. Uh, he's like, you can't hurt bees, they're endangered. So I looked it up. Turns out there are more bees on the planet today than in the entirety of human history. Yeah, what? <laughs> uh, most people in this room believed that bees were going extinct. You thought there was a problem with the bees. There's fucking not. We, no, there's not. No, certain colonies of bees were going extinct because they're fucking weak, but they were being replaced with stronger bees. And now we have more bees. Yeah. Good job. You fucking created a nightmare. Anyways, <laughs> just how fucking dumb we all are. We need more things that sting us. Yes? Question from the audience? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to worry about those ones. Those fucking pervert bees. Diddy did have a bee farm, dude. Dude, he's out here diddling bees. That Diddy thing is fucking crazy, dude. <laughs> Get his dick sucked by everybody. You want to be Diddy chauffeur? You got to suck his dick? That's fucking wild. Anyways, sorry. Sidetrack. Uh, another thing everyone just fucking believes because it gets said all the time. Um, people always say, we've explored more space than we have the oceans. Yeah, it's not fucking true. We have very detailed maps of the We've been to the Marianas Trench like all the time. That's the deepest part of the ocean. Oh, yeah, but that's just more dumb people. Yeah. People just need to admit it. We're dumb. Th people are like, I bet the government has underwater bases. It's like, no, why would they do that? That's stupid. That's not practical. It would suck down there. And people are like, oh, we need to explore more of the Why? It's fish. People, anyway, sorry. <laughs> what else about me? Um, I have a license to kill. Yeah. Or like an expired CPR card. It's basically the same shit. You got to. 
You got to keep up on your certs. <laughs> it is dangerous. Um, I love movies. Uh, some people uh, call me a cinephile, um, but I don't like being called that. <laughs> it feels bad. It feels like someone walked in on you fucking an uncooked thing of cinnamon rolls. <laughs> Just like, oh, that's not what it looks like. <laughs> Fuck. I got to get a new roommate. Um... How much easier would it have been for Bruce Banner if he was just the Credible Hulk? <laughs> <laughs> he would have been like, you don't want to make me angry. You wouldn't like me if I was angry. And it's like, yeah, I buy that. That checks out. <laughs> have a good day. <laughs> it's just before anything even started. Um, I got to get out of here, but uh, before I do... Um, I think it's important uh, from somebody who's stupid <laughs> uh, to talk about um, Israel and Palestine uh, because that's what uh, stupid people like to do is just throw out every opinion they have. <laughs> but frankly, I don't really have an opinion. On, like that, It looks like it sucks, but I'm like way more worried about some kid shooting up a Wendy's because he didn't get hugged enough. You know, like that's <laughs> my <laughs> shit that I got to deal with. Um, but it does. It looks terrible. Like you see, like soldiers in the street shooting kids, and like that's fucking terrible. That's not how it should be. Those should be kids in schools shooting each other. That's the American way. Let's go, USA, USA, USA. 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 All right. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Joe and Jimmy. Spitting truth bombs, folks. Joe Ganjami. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm uh, I'm uh, wearing a new outfit, Sierra, and I got some new jokes I'd like to do. <laughs> Demi Moore is born 20. Okay. You know that's just natural. I don't have a lot of hair. <laughs> Check this out, though. All right, listen. We got we gonna be able to get to Cleveland because I'm driving. This vehicle. <laughs> ah, good times. All right, we are going to move forward in our rhythm and blues and blues with you. Um, this next young man uh, started the show here about 1958, when this place was known as Bridget's um, first laugh. It was. Uh, <laughs> So stupid. Um, he started this uh, uh, so many years ago, uh, 10, 15, 20 years ago probably, and uh, and then uh, when COVID came, uh, he was ready to get rid of it, and uh, and then unfortunately he gave it to me, and I've turned it into a room that can have six people in it. So I've really, <laughs> I've taken it to one more than John Henry, so I'm just doing a little bit better. Okay. It's a stormy Tuesday. Uh, seriously, though, uh, I love this man dearly. He made the sign on the stage and uh, and was the one that took it from the main room and put it back here and made it intimate and beautiful and had the vision that many people don't have. And you can tell by the shitty shows besides this, the greatest weekly comedy festival ever started by Mr. John Henry. Please put your hands together for the wonderful, the loving, and the originator, Mr. John Henry. <laughs> Keep it going for Sean, everybody. So talented. He really is. Very few hosts could get a, get away with walking up on stage in the middle of somebody else's set and killing and uh, doing a midget impersonation, which you can't do anymore. <laughs> but he did it. He pulled it off. He pulled it off for you 98 people that are in here. A lot of people in this room right now. I did build the stage and uh, they hang the curtains and build it. A lot of people don't notice this. This sign lights up. I made this from scratch. Yeah, that was me. That was me. That was the most impressive thing you're going to see me do tonight. I, uh, I wasn't scrolling Instagram, <laughs> Joe, during your set. I was just uh, like writing my set. Um, <laughs> I don't do a lot of comedy anymore. I pretty much do jokes here. 
and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like scrolling through old sets. I realized I have a lot of, I've had keeping notes in my phone of jokes and stuff. Uh, my earliest note is 2014. And I'm like, I've got a lot of stuff in here. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just going to pull up an old set, and I'm going to maybe do that set tonight. Uh, right? Yeah. And <laughs> so I pulled up a set. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sierra Vista, 521-2015. It's the same fucking jokes I did last month here. <laughs> it's just worse, <laughs> worse versions of those jokes. <laughs> that was it. And I go, I'm fucked tonight. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I really need to write something new. I tried I tried writing a new set tonight, and I only got halfway through it. Um, so bear with me, because it's only setups. <laughs> <laughs> Who's drinking tonight? <laughs> Spring's here. <laughs> you guys excited for March Madness? You don't think that's funny? <laughs> How'd you like if I came down to your work? <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I'm not going to do that for 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, I'm not. I was very offended when uh, Sean uh, said the two vapes together were the John Belushi or the Chris Farley. I did feel personally attacked at that, Sean. I want to let you know. It's very offensive to a fat, funny guy to make those jokes. <laughs> I think I'm not funny. Uh, okay, so uh, let's see, what do we got here? I went to, uh <laughs> this is real, actually, this is a full joke, uh, a full, mostly complete joke. I went to Aldi, the grocery store, right over here in Bell. Anybody ever been to an Aldi grocery store? Okay, now that's kind of a new thing. Uh, Aldi, A-L-D-I, big in the Midwest, apparently, new out here. Uh, and uh, only went there once and probably the only time I'm ever going to go there because you couldn't use a shopping cart. They got this whole thing where they have shopping carts, they're outside, and they're locked up. You have to pay a quarter to get a shopping cart, and I think their thought process is if you give them a quarter, put the quarter in the thing that unlocks the cart, you go, it's incentive to return the cart, Right? And you get your quarterback. That's exactly it. <laughs> you get your quarterback. Uh, all I saw was Aldi sells shopping carts for 25 cents. <laughs> because I didn't have a quarter. Because they don't want homeless people to steal the shopping carts. Funny thing is, I gave all my change to a homeless person. <laughs> I only carry credit cards at this point. So if you ever want to start a thriving shopping cart sales business, just buy them from Aldi. They sell them for 25 cents. <laughs> All right. What else have we got in my phone here? A lot of crazy, weird stuff over the years that I've just put in my phone without any context whatsoever. I don't know what I was thinking. But when you try to write jokes, you just write some shit down sometimes. Like maybe there's something there. And uh, I'm going to read you uh, some of these uh, things. Uh, if that's okay. Um, <laughs> of course, there's so much random shit in here that's worse stuff. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. This is the Bridget's Blacklist from 2016. <laughs> These are names of comics that were not allowed in the room. <laughs> from 2016. You want me to say them? Yes. Okay. Pretty sure they're not at home watching on the live stream anyway. Uh, to be honest, most of these people don't do any comedy anymore, except for one who does a lot of stuff. Uh, Aaron Antko, Steve Merrick, <laughs> Jorge Ruiz, Jamie Sanderson. G uh, Steve and Jamie hated me because uh, I did a show at Monkey Pants after they get kicked off the show. <laughs> Michael Longfellow, <laughs> <laughs> who's now on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> <laughs> But he pissed me off because he lied to me about about bailing on a show. He we was supposed to be here doing a set, and then he texted me. He was like, I can't make it. I'm like, Grandma's sick. And then Sierra saw him that same night at another show. <laughs> and I'm like, he's out. 
He's never going to make it without me. <laughs> Stuart Mazio. Oh. <laughs> Jim Holland. Gary Brockway. Anthony Destamito. And Levi Manis. I don't even know who Levi Manis is, but he apparently pissed me off at some point. <laughs> Probably said something on the Facebook uh, that I didn't like. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm an alcoholic and I vote. Bumper sticker idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen Turner and Hooch. No context whatsoever. <laughs> I just wrote down Kathleen Turner and Hooch. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> uh, when God farts, he opens a window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. It's uh, let's see, what do we got here? Uh, sleeping with the enemy in Seattle. <laughs> oh, God, okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, my God, that's a whole lot of paragraphs. No, thanks. A lot of, uh, a lot of stupid thoughts in here. Oh, my God, is there anything else worth saying in here? If in nine years, that's the only worthwhile things that I thought were funny. <laughs> that I never made a joke off of. Well, here's a joke I never uh, actually did. I never jacked off into a sock. I'm cold reading this, by the way. I never jacked off into a sock. My ex left a bunch of her stuffed animals behind when she broke up with me, so I just used those. <laughs> I call them cummy bears. I feel like I heard that joke. Is that mine? <laughs> Cummy bears. Oh, <laughs> uh, gosh. Well. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to look anymore. Um, all right, more actual jokes <laughs> that I've told several times. I'm on YouTube people who have obviously never seen me before. I can't believe you didn't know who I was, by the way. It's very insulting. I know who you are. It's the name. It's very hard to remember. I understand. It's cool. It's no problem. Really? Which puppy? Oh, I don't know. A lot of people being puppies. As long as it wasn't a dog. <laughs> Call back. <laughs> uh, they say that uh, uh, when you uh, orgasm, you make the same face as when you die. <laughs> this broad knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> when you orgasm, you make the same face as you do as when you die. Uh, and I, uh, I heard this, and I go, how do you prove that? <laughs> Who was, how do you do a side-by-side -side on that one? You know what I mean? Like, you got to get some, <laughs> you got to get some really open-minded people involved to do that test. Uh, I'll never know if it's true, of course. I've only ever seen somebody's face when they die, so... Oh, my God. Did I do the all setups, no punchlines yet? <laughs> I, know I, I know I did. Uh, I, uh, I, watch, I watch porn. You guys hear this porn getting banned in Texas and now maybe Missouri? Like, they're, like, doing this. Pornhub is, like, done with Texas. Pornhub is just, like, fuck you, Texas. We're out. <laughs> Peace out, Pornhub. Uh, Pornhub is probably the most powerful entity in Texas, by the way, or anywhere. Uh, and I'm sure they're going to change their laws pretty quick. But uh, that's not even part of the story. <laughs> Do you guys? This is, this is, it's therapy. It's all it is. It's therapy. Listen to this for 100 people in this room. Uh, I... If you've watched porn or Pornhub, I, you probably get a lot of ads popping up. And uh, I see a lot of them that pop up and they say, try not to jack off. 
click here. Try not to come. You never heard of that? No? Oh, you don't watch porn? Oh, but you watch some porn. Oh, well. They, if you, I know nobody's going to admit it out loud. I get it. But that's what the ads say. You all know it. And I kind of don't think the ads know why I'm there, is what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm putting those... I'm putting them for sale on Pornhub tomorrow. You know what's crazy is all porn ads on Pornhub, all the ads are for just other porn. Free porn here. I'm like, I'm already at the free porn. Why do I want to leave this free porn to go to that free porn so I can try not to come over there? And then they have porn games. They have ads for porn games. Play this game. Also, play this game. Try not to come while playing this game. You don't know why I'm here. Uh, <laughs> it's not effective. If you want to, like, a, a really, like, I want to see Pornhub have actual ads for things I need. Like, that would be smart. Like, you don't see a Chevy commercial at a Ford dealership. That's stupid. Play this game. It's called Monopoly. I would like to see that ad. I'd be like, oh, I haven't played Monopoly in a while. I should do that when I'm finished with these cummy bears. <laughs> oh, this is actually a lot of more random shit. Uh, I want my laundry. No, that's not even a thing. I want my laundry room to be a walk in closet. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Just a thought. If a woman drunkenly makes out with another woman and claims to be bi, I'm calling bullshit. But if a man does that, he's the gayest man I've ever seen. Why is that? It's kind of true. All right. Uh, let's close this. Let's close this em embarrassment off <laughs> with, uh, with a joke. Uh, I just have to think of one here on my phone. You remember the time when Skippy from Family Ties was in here? Some of you guys were here for that. You remember Family Ties? Uh, you remember Skippy Handelman, the neighbor? Yeah? He came here and did a set once. They paid him, the owner paid him $1,000 to come in here and do a set on a Tuesday night. That was about this many people in the room, yeah. <laughs> I have a t-shirt for the, he gave away t-shirts. And his, for 45 minutes, he just played ringtones on his phone into the microphone. <laughs> and said... This is what my phone says when this person calls. And it was like an ironic ringtone for 45 fucking minutes. You really missed out. Oh, God. And that's my time, everybody. Thank you very much. I'm John Henry. You're all wonderful. I love you. John Henry, let's hear it for that hot shit right there. That Nice young man. Um, I, I, to tag on to John, th th this is the deal. With when Skippy was here, John Henry called me. He goes, hey, Sean, I know you're on the show tonight, but I have to cancel you. I go, why? <laughs> he goes, fucking Skippy from Family Ties is in there. I go, what are you talking about? Apparently the owner, Skippy called here thinking it was like a real comedy club, and the owner had just bought the bar and somehow got confused and thought and booked it and didn't tell John and forgot till the last minute, and Skippy showed up thinking it was a comedy club, and it was like, Four people and John. <laughs> and uh, Christy, my wife, was like, I got to go and see this train wreck. I go, she goes, come with me. I go, I don't want to go see that. I'm going to sit home and smoke weed. I said, John, cancel me. I'll never speak to that fucking prick again, ever. <laughs> yeah, so I was black. I was on his 2017 blacklist. I was the, the next year my name is on there. It's so funny. Dude, if I, if I said out loud the blacklist right now of this place, <laughs> Live on camera. <laughs> Let's just sum it up to anybody not in this room can go fuck yourself and your mother right in the mouth. All you prick bastards. Okay, I'm just kidding. I just want to say I love everybody. They're great. But I will fuck all them up so bad. <laughs> all right. I remember um, at one point uh, when we got here... Um, a friend of mine said, hey, these are really strong. You shouldn't take a bunch. I said, I'll take as many fucking those gummies as I want. They're not going to hit me. 
Dude, everything hit. I'm like, why am I so goofy being stupid? Dude, fucking like 40 minutes ago, that shit's bounced around my head. I'm like, I feel, st- I'm, I am lit to the tits right now. Those are great. They were so tiny, too. All right, so let me start this show, folks. Here's a joke I wrote 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Demi Moore had three kids. Okay, sure. What are you talking about? Okay, okay, seriously. We're down to our last two comedians for the night, and I'm going to get to them in 20 minutes after I do another bunch of improv, lock the gate. Okay, here we go. Oh, all right. This next young man, very talented, very loved, has a wonderful puppy, and is just a great man, super funny, plays music also. He's multifaceted, but more importantly, he's like a really good human being, and it's rare to find someone who's such a good human being and so fucking funny and relevant, and I'm just always thrilled when he's here. Please put your hands together for the wonderful Mr. Darrell Johnson. Hello. Hello, all. Let me make sure I'm in the, got to make sure I'm in the camera light, you know. (coughs) I am the one and only black comedian tonight, so I have to make sure the lighting's correct. (laughs) But the camera does. YouTubers. Hello, YouTube. Uh, Let's see. Is there a a comedian that hates me? Uh... That could be watching right. Oh, Darrell Hearns is somewhere out there. That <laughs> motherfucker. That mo- okay. The fact that people have to introduce. Hey, there was a time when they were just like, "Here comes Darrell," you know, and everybody knew. But now they have to say Darrell Johnson because the worst comedian in the valley <laughs> also shares the same name as me. It's like a multiverse. <laughs> I met this other version of me. And it's like the it's the complete opposite. He's a complete <laughs> asshole. He's not funny. The only thing we got in common is we're both black. It's just, it's, it's odd. It's odd. All right. Joke time, baby. <laughs> Don't ever bring him here unless you want to just, unless you want to have the worst comics in Phoenix show <laughs> and you book like six to eight of the worst comedians just to give, just to teach him a lesson. Lock the curtain. <laughs> let Sean take notes. Let Sierra, t- t- let Sierra take notes. <laughs> They'll never do comedy again. <laughs> we can only hope <laughs> the delusion ends here. Anyway, uh, it's great to be here, guys. I love being here. Uh, there's a whole lot of crazy stuff going on in the world, so this is always a great little outlet to come here. Uh, Sarah's here. Hello, Sarah. Thanks for coming out. Sarah's like the biggest supporter in like local comedy, and she's been popping out to the shows, hearing all the weed and pussy jokes uh, the nights. <laughs> That's Phoenix comedy for you. I was like, oh, how many dick jokes did I hear tonight? But, uh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's great. Uh, we're in the midst of election season. Yay. Trump's out here doing side missions still. Everything he can to avoid jail right now. And, like, he has a, they say he's got to pay $175 million now to let go of so like all these other cases. I'm like, man, this mug. $175 million? He don't got that kind of money. He had to call... Uh, Otani, and uh, his, like, no, little, little baseball joke there, yes, for those that participate, baseball, yeah. bunch of dudes running around with their cups off, and <laughs> all right, anyway, anyway, happy baseball season to those, yeah. I got like all, uh, I got like a, a an email that was like, hey, how, <laughs> It, this is the best thing about it. I, it was an email I got from T-Mobile about getting the MLB package. And in the email, it said, Happy Black History Month. <laughs> it's almost April. <laughs> that might be the blackest email ever. That's absolutely <laughs> when we would put that, that. I loved it. I loved it. It made me happy. <laughs> yeah, that was, uh, that was wonderful. That was wonderful. Looked at the person who sent it, Alicia Smith. I'm like, mm, mm. that's one of the questionable ones, you know. <laughs> she could be one of them, you, you know. Yeah, I don't know, uh, Alicia Smith, huh? And it was spelled Alicia the normal way, you know. You know. <laughs> it was great. It was great. <laughs> There was no like hyphens, apostrophes, nothing like it was just normal 
Uh, not even Alicia. You could tell it was Alicia. Okay, okay, I got you. All right, I got you. It's Alicia. Hey, you a bitch. Oh, the worst. The worst. Oh. You guys see that uh, Donald Trump's got shoes now to help sell the black vote? Yeah, man. To help sell the black vote, he's got shoes now. They look like uh, like boxing shoes, but they're gold. They're these like gold plated shoes. And uh, yeah, that's the whole thing. Was like black people love sneakers. So oh, what, what, go out and put. Now here's the thing. I wouldn't be mad at it if Donald Trump won Game Seven of the NBA Finals <laughs> against the Chicago Bulls. If he led the Suns to their only championship in 93, yeah, okay. Now you, now we got a reason. To, no reason to buy Donald Trump. The fuck have you done? In my, in my childhood, I know Donald Trump from Home Alone 2. All right, that was like a cameo. Who's the white guy in the hallway? Oh, he's someone who's rich. Don't worry about him. Okay. That was, that was Donald Trump to me. That was other than, I knew Donald Duck before I knew Donald Trump. That was just simple. Simple life. We like, all did, right? It's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, let's see. I'm watching a lot of college basketball right now because I work from home. So, yay. That means uh, I get to watch the women's game, too. The women's game is fantastic right now. Let's give it up the women basketball. Yes. Yes. They are saving sports right now, is these women. I even like uh, Angel Reese. Everyone's like, oh, she's so ghetto. I don't give a fuck. She's ghetto as hell. I love her. I absolutely love her. I love her because she's ghetto. All right? So the, 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 the thing is, is, like, you don't have that trash talking. Like, that was the thing everybody was talking about. Like, oh, the, all they do is shoot threes and layups. Now they're shit talking each other. Caitlin Clark told someone to shut the fuck up yesterday. I was like, yes, that's right, girl. You tell them. You tell that crowd. I like the fire, you know. To be honest, like, you think of the NBA, like, these guys – they're barely getting elbowed, and they're like, oh, and they're laying on the ground. They, the All-Star game is all but over. Put the WNBA players in there. Caitlin Clark could help the Detroit Pistons right now. No doubt. Right now. You pull her right out of the NCAA tournament and say, the Pistons need you to play 45 minutes. Okay, we, I, we got you. The Suns need her. They went and got Isaiah Thomas. He's the same height as Sierra. They absolutely <laughs> They absolutely could use Caitlin Clark. Don't tell me her height is going to matter. She's a better shooter. Go get that woman. Little dude. Crowd giving a standing ovation. The fuck did he win? I believe his Boston team beat the Suns. Like, anyway, anyway. He is. He's just a, just a little, little action figure. You know, he fights hard. He fights hard. I love the, uh, the Diddy news. That's my favorite thing right now. No Diddy. That's the that's the new no homo, right? And it's like, hey man, you know, no, no, them dude, them young boys was coming. No Diddy. <laughs> the context is great. If that's the best thing to come out of that situation, I'm all for it. In the documentary, did he do it or did he not? You know, like some of us, you know. I can't wait. Oh. It's already there, guys. It's already there. Absolutely. And you know it's going to come. You know, I, I, you know, some 12-year-old on Twitter has probably already thought of it. It was like, oh, who's so smart? You know, but look, the thing is, is it's not a new thing, right? We all knew, like, first of all, the guy's motto is can't stop, won't stop. Uh-uh, uh-uh. <laughs> Put his own little thing. It's a weird dude, right? But after all this shit, he's going to have to change his name again. That's crazy. That's crazy, but... I love it. Like I said, if that's the best thing to come out of it. And you know, the crazy thing is like, think about poor Biggie up there in heaven. He's probably getting roasted up there. <laughs> Tupac's just walking by like, hey, man, that's your boy, right? <laughs> ain't, that your, ain't that your boy? You know, the one, the one? Hey, tell me about them parties. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> it was all a dream. Nah, bro. Nah, bro. Nah. We don't believe that no more. No, that's some weird. It's, I don't know. That's weird. It's a weird situation, but oh well. No oh well. I'm sure all them artists he fucked over are like the, the band is probably like, ah, yeah. Who, now who's got to walk to Brooklyn for cheesecake? You ain't even got a house. You ain't got a house. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's beautiful. Thailand. 
I watched that uh, Nickelodeon documentary, too. That shit, man. You know, I used to want to be on those shows. All that. That's how I started wanting to do stand-up comedy. I was like, I want to be on the, I want to be on those shows. And my mom was always like, tell me a joke. T- try to do something funny. But, you know, whatever. But all it did was get me in trouble in school. So, you know, whatever. But, damn, seeing that crazy shit. Now, here's the thing that cracked me up, though. The minute they showed you who, uh, like, what Dan Snyder looked like, oh, yeah, absolutely that guy looks like he fucking ra- fucks around with kids. He's the creepiest looking guy and he was like, even when he was, uh, what was the show he was on? Head of the class. He still looked like that fucking weird. Yes, he was, yes. He was that guy. Absolutely. And I'm like, I wouldn't let that guy around my, ch- I wouldn't let that guy around my friend's kid. <laughs> like, nah, I'm going to stand right here. Like, why? That's one of the craziest things, man. They were just, little, and then the people are. The parents, the word, you know, why well, I didn't know. But listen, I'd have killed that. You would have never found his body. There's no way. That man is, oh. Anyway, if you get a chance to watch it, though, it is a, it is a wonderful, eye-opening documentary. Just, mm, mm. Amanda Bynes went crazy. Understandable now. What are they playing over? You know, I did take one of those little, uh, those little edibles, those little cabinet edibles there, and uh, yeah, no, 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 no. I did not. I did not. They were not one of those. <laughs> yeah, John, you've now coined that term. That's that's it. That's what it is. That's what it is. Uh, oh yeah, let's see. Hold on. I was gonna talk about something else tonight here. Uh, let's see. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta do my John. I gotta do my John Henry here. Oh, yeah. All the comedians that, no. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's just these two. It's our audience members. Oh, it's the comedians? The white guys? All right. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just peace and quiet. I'm actually glad Sierra's here. That's great. I, I know. I know. I'm just distracted. That's just distracted over here. Uh, oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, They need a speaker in there, right? Yeah. So guys who take a shit with the curtain closed and the men's restroom can hear us. <coughs> Fantastic. Um, you know, I, uh, I was driving around and I saw that the, so I have this app on my phone and it tells you what the uh, real estate is like in the area you're in. So like, you know, if you can like afford to live in the area, you know, so whatever. So I was fucking around with it, just having fun. And, uh, and I got to Chandler and, and the thing was going crazy. It was like 2.1K on average, just rent, if you want, for, I'm like, what the hell is going through, and uh, in all these apartments, they all had these little extra links for, like, roommate, searching for this person, whatever, and with these background checks and screenings, and I was looking at this, like, you know, I, mean, I moved a couple weeks ago, but I was looking at this, and I was like, man, look at this world we're in now, it's too expensive to be single, you can't even live on your own, and now, you know, and now you got to think about other factors, as a man, like, I'm 38 years old, I'm not an old man, but I'm a little too old to have, like, another dude roommate. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, like imagine bringing a girl home and being like, oh, uh, don't mind the other 40-year-old failure that <laughs> sleeps on the, the futon over there. He, you know, you can stay the night, but he makes a protein shake at 3 a.m. and <laughs> listens to Joe Rogan podcast, you know? Like, <laughs> got to make some decisions, you know? It's, it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different now. I don't know. I don't know. It just made, made me mad, too, because then I saw all the homeless couples laying at the bus stop all colored. I was like, these fuck crackheads over here, they sticking together. <laughs> There's nothing that makes you feel worse about being single than seeing the crackheads. They are, they're never single. They're always in it. I'm like, damn. Always. always. What if that was the key, right? What if, <laughs> like, what if we find out in, like, 40 years, like, the key to happy marriage was, like, oh, it's just a little crack cocaine. And it's, <laughs> That'd be fantastic, man. Ah, it's wonderful. <laughs> it's wild. I uh, was at the Target over by my house, just getting to know my new area, and uh, <laughs> there were these white kids in the store, and one of them had, I overheard the other one say something about the other dude, or he was like, hey, bro, that's kind of sus that you said that. And I was like, oh, fuck. 
and I hate these Gen Z terms. I fucking hate them. So I'm standing there on the other side of the aisle, and I was like, I gotta see what these kids look like. <laughs> I gotta just, I just gotta see what they look. So I gotta, like turn the corner, and of course it's like, you know, translucent white kids. You know, like you know the ones where you could like press their skin and you still see like the little things come back. You know, it's see the veins in there. It's, it's wonderful. Dan, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> wild. But anyway, I was walking around, and then their mom was over there. And of course, it's Target, so mom was hot. And uh, But I noticed, though, one of the, so it's like they had their brothers, I'm sure, but, but one of them had a little bit of a tan, a little bit different hair. The other one was just fucking white boy, Skylar White. Okay, so I was walking by, and I was like, you know, and the guy's like, oh, man. He's like, he's like that's kind of sus or whatever. And they were talking about, like, um, the, the they're trying belts on, belt sizes, and seeing it like, if you tighten the belt too much, you get a little jean boner. So these <laughs> kids are sitting there poking the fucking jeans on, and I'm like, oh my God. Like nothing against single moms, but that's the moment dad needs to step in. You, you need a man to step in. That's, it was just weird. So I wanted to say something about it being sus, but I was like, nah, I'm gonna leave it alone. But they were just poking each other. And then the camera at Target was like right on them too. So you see it on the camera thing. I was like, this is the gayest generation <laughs> full of some of the most homophobic people. It's absolutely insane. There were people that were mad about the new X-Men cartoon because the character who can literally shift from a man to a woman was called non-binary. That's the goddamn definition, guys. <laughs> That's literally what he does. Like, it cracks me up. It cracks me up. I, uh, I, d I don't know. I don't know. I feel like this is going to be the end of us. Um, I'm cool with it. <laughs> I'm cool. <laughs> the alien, we have outlived our life. Look, the, a the aliens want to come and get us. And Tom Cruise wants to, Tom Cruise, come on, Tom, come take us off, man. Take us to the planets. It's great. It's great. It sucks, man. It sucks. Well, I live in the, we, Arizona, we live in the worst state, the number one worst state for dating. Yep, absolutely. That's us. That's us. Road rage and uh, and dating. That's 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 what we were, you know. That's our our worst things. It's weird though. It's weird because I you know I don't do I, I've never done the dating apps or anything. I just kind of got lucky. Got out and met a civilian. You know, hey. <laughs> yeah. You, you, you were kind of funny on stage. Out of the five out of shape fat white comics, I like the one black guy in fact, He got the yes. Black privilege, baby, black privilege. I'd never make it in Atlanta. I'd never make it as a comic out there. But out here, oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, I got it out here. Yeah, yep, yep. Black privilege, <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. But yeah, it's, uh, it's different, it's tough. I think it's the heat. I think the heat makes people, uh, it's tough, you know, right? You ever try to have sex when it's hot in the room? Like, motherfucker, you better turn a fan on or something in here and I'm sweating like Shaq. I ain't about, uh. This is not a this is not a pleasant process, but it's always it's always that way everywhere you go. So I don't know. I'm try I try to figure out what it is. I was dating cougars for a while, loved it, absolutely loved it. Told everybody, I said, you never know your own self worth till you date someone who's got more in common with your mom than she does with you. <laughs> it's beautiful, it's beautiful. <laughs> Learned about a whole lot of different things. Those dates, all of them going to dates at fucking Applebee's and all of them. My friends are all excited. Like, no, bro, we're using Open Door. If you ain't got that app, you ain't going to no real restaurants. Huh? Like, I was learning about reservation, learning about wine. Oh, man, all the different wines. I got a wine rack at home right now. Beautiful. The Cougars don't keep you either. That's not their purpose. They've been married. They've had the guy. They know every fucking trick you're about to pull. The trick is, is the Cougars got you to make you better so you don't go out there and be the guy that she was married to, right? You gotta be, they're creating better men. It's fantastic. And they don't want anything other than you to stay awake past 9 p.m. and keep your dick hard when she's ready to fuck. Like, that's it, that's it. It's a beautiful thing. Tell you what, that's it. Oh, that's good times. Don't be afraid of those cougars. All those young fellows on YouTube. Good time, good time. <laughs> I love it, I love it. I'm, a, I'm an Arizona native, so, you know, growing up out here, I get to see all sorts of stuff. One thing, uh, 
One thing I really like, though, um, is our lack of culture. People ask me all the time. You know, people that don't live here, they're always like, well, you know, Arizona, you know, isn't that kind of racist out there? Uh, yeah, of course. But they're not Georgia racist. They're not Alabama racist. It's because there's no culture here. Everyone here just moved here from wherever they were from. So they just bring that racism with them. You know, like it's not unified yet. It hasn't had enough time to, you got about 20, 30 more years, you know. Leave it for the next generation. Racism in Arizona is very simple. Right now it's like, what the hell's Juneteenth? <laughs> oh, you mean we get the day off? Why don't you just start with that? They don't care about anything else. Oh, don't you want to know about the African Americans being free? But no, 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 don't go dividing us now. You could have just said we got the day off. You know, just leave it at that. I'm cool with that. I'm all right with that. They're not burning crosses at Westgate, even when the Cardinals lose. I'm fine with that. That's cool. I like the, uh, we have the Hispanic culture out here. We got real Mexicans out here. See, yeah, 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 you know. But you can't walk into Home Depot without someone walking up to you and speaking Spanish. Just right away, right away. It's the only state that happens in. I love it. I love it, though, because, again, this is really Mexico. It, that's exactly what this is. People get mad all the time. I remember the, the uh, people were like, oh, the, the Mexicans are taking our jobs. And it was all over the news. And I said, those are white guys that are not native to Arizona. White guys that are native here know that there's not a single job those Mexicans are doing that they want to do. All right? It's not because they don't want to. They don't care. Just do whatever. It's just they can't. They physically cannot do that. The sun will not allow them to. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John do not have a roofing service in Arizona for a reason. Leave that to the Martinez brothers, okay? Mexicans are immune to sunburns because this is Mexico. Right? It's as simple as that. White guys, do your tile work. Do the counter jobs. Do the lights. You are housecrackers. Don't forget that. John knows the drill. Now, white guys in Wisconsin, Michigan, they're field crackers. Their sun is different, all right? Their sun is different. Don't get mad. It's always what it is. <laughs> Every white person in Arizona, you got to balance, all right? You only got two options. Either you burn and everyone knows you're Irish and Scottish, or you tan and everyone knows you got some Italian in you. That's it, baby. All right, guys, I'm Joel Johnson. I appreciate you all. Thank you, Waylon, for being the only other black thing in here. Thanks, Joel. Jarrell Johnson. You. Yeah. Spitting some true physicisms, Jabril Johnson. Oh, yeah, that's right. I put my jacket on. I was, a little, I was a little chilly in the back. What's up, bro? You want some of this, bro? What's up, bro? I know, it's so stupid, right? I know, right? So. You guys were. I love this jacket, though. It's so comfortable. It's stretchy. It's nice. All right. Hey, we're down to our last comedian of the evening, and unfortunately, we went too long. So we're going to have to get her here uh, in a couple months. She just made the band list. I'm just kidding. So stupid. Um, we love her so much, and I don't need to say much more than she's just one of the best of all time. We've had literally like four of my favorite comics on the show tonight. We've only had four comics, and everyone's just done whatever they want and done long sets, and no one's really gotten the light. Uh, I had to I had to fucking give Darrell the light because I need to give Sarah at least three minutes to talk before you have to, because we're 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 gonna be doing karaoke. I got and by the way, my best friend um, Herschel when I was six. I don't want to go off on a tangent because we're getting we're starting to get close. My point is is we didn't need to have seventy two shitty comics on tonight. We just need these four because they're fucking brilliant, and we're closing it out with one of the best of all time, Sierra Name Miranda. Cute, right? You know what I mean? Kind of rough, you know? Um, right? Phoenix Mercury, baby. Phoenix Mercury. All right. Um, um, sorry. Uh, I got stoned. Okay. I hit that really hard, and then I walked up. I'm like, holy shit, my bad. Yeah, like, honestly. Like, pass it around. Let's get hep tonight. I don't fucking care. Okay. Um, Darrell, yes, had, honestly, what a great fucking set. 
and I love that it was for, like, Sean's like, oh, well, you don't need 72 comics. You only need these comics that were on tonight. Okay, but we need the 72 because, like, somebody needs to bring somebody to the show, you know? <laughs> so, like, we kind of do need the 72 comics um, because I only brought Dan tonight, okay? It's, this, you know, you want to talk about, you know, needing roommates. Dan and I are roommates, and I brought my roommate tonight to the show, so you're welcome, Darrell. Um, shut up, Dan. I have to hear you on the way home. I don't need this. I, um, uh, also another thing. Um, oh, Darrell, it was that. Okay, first, I have to say this. I have to tell this like, quick little story. Darrell, I'm not shocked that Darrell could nail that fucking set. That there's like all, you know, you like you did, you did new stuff, you did old stuff, you did such a beautiful set. I think that was like fucking 17 minutes or some shit. And it was 21, dude. Did not feel that long. Did not, yeah, yeah. That was like 21 fucking minutes. Did not feel that long. Thank God so much because I got three and a half and I'm out of this motherfucker. <laughs> I do not want to be up here any longer than I have to. We've exposed my Achilles and it is when everyone does well and I can't say a damn word about them. Now I'm going to do what? My jokes? Ugh. You know? Um, no, I don't write. We don't need to write anymore. Okay. Um, but Darrell, I've told this great story. Darrell, I, I'm not surprised that you can accomplish that because that is in you. Uh, it was like, okay, it was about like, I don't know, at this point, what, a fucking decade ago? Um, I'm not sure, but like probably five, four, I don't know. You, you helped me out. When you had the Ice House Tavern. And Darrell, there was a... Um, it was a heinous night. It was just reckless. The whole fucking crowd was weird. And um, this one bra, I don't know, she looked like Tara Reid, and she did as many drugs as hers, too. <laughs> I don't remember her name. Um, oh, yeah. Right. She brought, like, she brought half the people. Because, again, yeah, maybe we're funny, but, like, we need coked out Tara Reid <laughs> to bring all of her friends so somebody's there to laugh, you know? <laughs> so she brings the crowd, and I'm like, oh, my God, I love you. Your cocaine's so good, Right. And uh, it was trash. It was trash, but we did it. <laughs> but, like, we're at Ice House Tavern, and, you know, the most distracting part is the fact that there's a fucking hockey game happening. <laughs> but even that was, so it, it was, um, and it was a costume theme. It was like, a, I don't know if it was for Halloween or what, but it was like a theme, a, a character theme. And here comes Darrell, and it's his time to go up. And at this point, Tara Reed's dealer is just, like, losing his shit, right? <laughs> He's now having, like, a mental breakdown, and... <laughs> Just being so fucking loud. And Sean was like this like ugh, character where he was always like this the whole fucking night. And he had his like fisherman's hat all funky on purpose. Yeah, he was dressed in, and he was dressed like in this lime green color stuff because that's his fucking color. Whatever, it looks good on him. Uh, it's not St. Patty's Day anymore. Uh, all right, so, so he goes. So anyway, Sean was like goofy the whole fucking night. I almost want to say you had a tooth blacked out on purpose to be silly. Yeah. Yeah, 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 you're a crazy writer. This is a silly fucking thing. And now, the, you know, Tara Reed's dealer's losing it. And Darrell's like, and then, like, Sean's like, you're up in two, you know, to Darrell. And Darrell's doing, like, Barack Obama, okay? <laughs> so this poor bastard's like, I, I got you, Sean. So he goes up there. Dude, you didn't break fucking character. He keeps doing, he's like, so I don't know how to do the fucking Barack Obama. But he does this beautiful fucking set. Meanwhile, Sean has told this guy, well, Sean is in complete nerd, grody, grody garb, has told this man to leave. It is from here to maybe the bar. You can hear the yelling. And Sean's like, I told you enough. Now you got to get the fuck out of here, right? <laughs> and this guy's like, what? And I could see it all happening. The entire time, Darrell's like, by any means. I am your president. <laughs> All right? I don't know how to do it. And then, and then you hear fucking Sean just go, I told you. Fuck. <laughs> Cracks this guy in the fucking jaw. Kicks him out of the fuck. You hear the door swing like, rah, rah. and the guy's like, I didn't do nothing. You look back at Darrell and he's like, and with that being said, <laughs> Michelle, I love you, Michelle. Like, you never broke fucking character. So I had to give it up to Darrell. I will never forget that night, as no matter how, my, how many drugs I do with Sean, I'll never forget that fucking night. I was at Ice House the other day. I was at Ice House the other day. Like, it was hilarious. We went there, my girlfriend and I went there, um, because uh, I'm a drunk, and you know. 
she has to keep me happy somehow. And uh, But we went in there and I had to tell the story and I was like, let me tell you, babe. I was like, I was standing right fucking here. Sean's right fucking here. Like, I, I mapped it, it was like CSI. I mapped that shit out. Like if, like if it was like some fucking YouTube, TikTok, quiet on set fucking documentary. Oh, it was a great, yeah, it was such a beautiful moment. Um, uh, let's see, I do say girlfriend. Um, I have a girlfriend, and I do say girlfriend. I do not say partner, because I'm not gonna dress like this and act like saying partner. <laughs> Doesn't sound like the most lesbian fucking thing you've ever heard. <laughs> Unless I was rolling around with Dan, like if I was rolling up and I'm like my partner, I want someone to look at me and go, okay, muff diver, we'll see this fucking butch. <laughs> And then Dan walks in, they're like, oh, so really a butch, you know what I mean? I just want, I would only do it to fool people. Um, I don't identify as lesbian uh, because I'm likable. <laughs> I like that one, I thought of the other day. I figured it's like a fucking workshop. Let's just do these like one-liners and see what happens. Because nowadays you don't even have to write. You can tell, you can be on stage and tell club promoters, oh, I'm improvising tonight. And you get booked, <laughs> apparently. Back in my day, you know what I mean? All right. Um, oh, his setups are gold. Okay. Um, let's see. Joe. Oh, Joe talked about. Um, no, I'll do that in a minute, actually. Um, yeah, no, 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 no. I liked your joke. I liked your joke. I was going to, I was just going to do a little tag on it. I wasn't going to talk shit about you, I swear. Um, you did too good of a set. What could I possibly say? Um, so yes, I don't uh, I don't identify as lesbian because I'm likable, but um, I've been in a relationship now with um, with this broad, um, <laughs> with my girlfriend. It's very, I'm very happy. Everything's wonderful. Blah blah blah. Right? Yeah, great. Uh, but we're in that great stage now. I think we're we're coming up. So we're like in two two and a half years now, right? And we're living together, obviously, because we're lesbian. You know what I mean? Uh, you haul lesbian style. Um, so obviously we live together. It's only been two years. Um, and everything's going great. We're in that like nice little like spot in the relationship where like anything could start a fight, you know? Like I love it. It's great. Cause it really means something. You know, like the other day I got I got mad, like we were we argued over crafting, you know what I mean? She's like building something because she's a fucking lesbian, right? And she was like, I gotta go to Lowe's. And I'm like, of course. Don't she have to go to love? You know? And then I love it because like she'll be gone for six hours, right? And this is like I dated men. It was awful. If a man's gone for six hours, what the fuck are you inside of right now? You know? Who the fuck have you been? You know? And I don't do that location shit because I don't know how to work phones, okay? So I'm not locating you because I don't know how to fucking do that. Right? And so it's like, you know, I'm not going to fucking ask. So, you know, I called because I'm like, I'm hungry. <laughs> Where have you been? Am I feeding myself or not? You know? So, like, that's the best thing. Like, if a dude's gone forever, I mean, you're cheating. But, like, you call her after six hours, and I'm like, where are you? And you don't even have to ask her because you just hear, like, dude, 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 in the background because she's at Home Depot now, you know? I thought you said you're going to Lowe's. Oh, so now you're at Home Depot? Like, that's a wonderful fight to have, you know? <laughs> oh, and let me guess. You have to go to Dollar Tree after this, don't you? You know what I mean? It's a wonderful fight, right? So, like, I like, it's like, at this point, like, what I like about, our, like, what I love about, like, arguing with a woman, you know, like, being in a relationship with a woman is, like, when you get mad at each other, you just, like, out-chore each other, you know? <laughs> like, we're just so mad. Now we have to prove it to each other. Like, I'm productive, you know what I mean? Like, I'll clean the bedroom spotless because I'm just like, fuck her. And guess what? I'm going to fold all the fucking laundry, that fucking bitch. Oh, because what? You can build a whole screen door on your own, you fucking bitch? Well, guess what? I know how to fold fitted sheets. Do you? You know? Nobody to I do. My nana taught me. I'm Mexican. This is how I know. Um, but yeah, like I will literally start a fight sometimes because I just want like a shelf hung, you know? What's next? Um, okay. Um, no, I won't do the joke thing because that's uh, that. Your joke was funny enough. I shouldn't. I shouldn't jump on it. Okay. Um, okay. So I have a joke that I want to rewrite. And since you all wonderful people are here, um, you've heard of a joke. But I recently found out that the joke got stolen. Uh, I watched it with my own eyes. It's fantastic. 
Um, mm. So much fun. So the joke I had uh, has been recently stolen and um, saw it at um, like a nice place, like CB Live or whatever. I was there to watch uh, a comedian, an actual comedian. Um, I was there to watch uh, like, you know, this headless bitch that I've seen on Instagram. And then the host comes up and she's great, but she stole my joke, okay? So I can't do it anymore. Uh, she's a local. So, um, and her name is, no. Okay, so she knows, she knows. She knows who she is. No, because she's nice and it's fine that she did it. Okay, but here's my thing, okay? I'm gonna try a new mix on it. So how should I do it? Honestly, I'm being very serious. Do I say the whole joke first and then I tell you how I'm gonna remix it or do I just remix it? Just remix it? Remix first, okay. And then names. Uh, her name is Ali Gangemi. She's a fucking bitch. I've seen her do it at corporate events. It's hack, okay? It's it's giving hack. No, Allie Gan Jemmy is the most beautiful thing in the world. Um, I love her more than anything. Okay. Okay. Um Okay, so the joke is, uh, right, so I'm 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 now I'm now taken. Now I'm in a relationship. Uh it's good for everyone because I was terrible at dating, right? It was awful for everybody. Um I was a whore, but I was great. So um the whole problem is, though, like, I wasn't good at dating because, like, now everything's on your phones, you know? Like, everything's just, like, like, you go to the bar, you go to the club, but you still check in on your fucking app to see, like, what what's around, like, around you, you know what I mean? Meanwhile, I'm just, like, twatting it out. Like, I'm right here, you know what I mean? I didn't know. <laughs> like, I didn't know you're supposed to play it coy. I was like, who's doing handies in the bathroom, you know what I mean? I didn't know that. So, um, you know, but here's the thing. Like, everyone's, like, using the apps, you know what I mean? We're treating, like, we're treating it like it's, like, fucking, like, Uber Eats, you know what I mean? Like, everyone's trying to, like, like Grubhub the muff, you know? Like, and DoorDash the snatch, you know? We're DoorDashing the gash. Okay, do we like DoorDashing the gash better? Okay. Okay, all right. So I'm thinking Grubhub and the Muff, and then instead of DoorDash and the Snatch, it's just DoorDash and the Gash. Do we like that? Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, by the way, uh, my joke used to be um, Postmate and the Pussy and DoorDash and the Dick. Yeah, so someone's doing it, and when you hear her do it, it's mine. But just know that I'm – don't tell her that I DoorDash the Gash now. Uh, but that's – all right, that's it. All right. I think DoorDash the Gash is good. She ain't on live stream. She's work. I told you she's at CB Live. She's working. Okay. She's doing actual gigs with people in the audience. All right. All right. Because I need three. I do need three. So Uber eats the meats, Grubhub and the muff, DoorDash the gash. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. What is it? Feeding the bleeding, you monster. I said share, not scare. <laughs> Feeding the bleeding? Who's bleeding? Am I bleeding? Oh, my God. You have your red wings, you sick son of a bitch. I know what you thought. You're like, this broad's, this broad has earned her red wings. I have not, sir. I would never. I'm a lady. Gee, oh, don't. I'm not. I'm disappointed. I am disappointed in your gums. I'll tell you that much. You better floss. No, dude. No, dude, I don't, I don't need the smell of pennies in my bedroom. <laughs> That's hacky. I stole that one. Okay. Um, okay, I guess the only thing I could go, should I just do one more or something really quick? Uh, let's see. No one's, oh, Darrell, the reason why, yeah, the reason why racism isn't so bad here is because, like, you're used to white people racism, and nobody is more racist than illegal Mexicans here. Like, they are the most racist pieces of shit. They say things, I'm like, whoa, buddy, buddy. Black Lives Matter, my God. Dude, I won't even. Like, I have a white, like, I'm, like, I'm trying to impress my girlfriend's white mom, and I'm like, and I, you know, I'm like, at this point, I'm like, God, that's not even bad. I live in Arizona, you know? That's like midway. Midwest racism is the nicest racism I've ever had in my life. The worst thing is asking me if I speak Spanish. It's literally the worst of it in the Midwest. It's like, oh, you assume, you know. All right. Um, 
Oh, okay. I'm not going to do the whole like other thing I did because I'll just be done this. I love John's list um, of people who have been uh, ousted, banned from here. He was giving a list off, and I'm like, dear God. Like, honestly, you weren't even taking it personally. I get it, John. You were like, I need to be in fear of the safety of my audience. Like, <laughs> I'm telling you, the list of people, he was like, Gary Brock, I'm like, racist, or a uh, rapist. And then he's like, uh, Jim Holland, I'm like, rapist. And then he's like, you know, like, uh, uh, Steve Mazio, I'm like, murderer. Like, there were, like, these people, there were three specific people who I'm like, assault, sexual assault, rapist, and then, like, the Steve Mazio guy, he, this dude would just roll up. And it wasn't like a theme show. He just rolled up dressed as fucking Heath Ledger's Joker. <laughs> and he was like, and he, I never watched the movie, but he does the pencil trick and he'd be like, do you want to play a game? And he'd sit on stage and I'm like, I think he has a bomb strapped to him, you know? <laughs> There's not enough insurance in the world. Like, John doesn't get insurance for this fucking show, you know what I mean? So no, he did it for all our safety, so I'm very, he should be proud of that band book. All right, my name's Sierra Name Miranda. Thank you guys very much. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for that son of a bitch right there. That <laughs> Closing out our spicy Latina show with a hack joke she stole from a working comic. That's so good. <laughs> um, hey, uh, thank you all for coming out. I know that th there was some inclement weather tonight, but uh, Lily, this is one of our my favorite uh, four comics. Uh, it's just a sweet night to have everyone do like fucking... Long 20-minute sets. Uh, get home safe. Thank you so much. We're here every Tuesday. We'll see you next week. Yeah.